morning and welcome to our adult Sunday school lesson from the First United Methodist Church in Brookhaven, Mississippi. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for all you created to protect and sustain us. Help us to fully understand our role and responsibility as caretakers of your creation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The title of our lesson today is Caretakers of Creation. The focal passage is from Leviticus 25, 1 through 7, and 18 through 24. The purpose statement is to embrace the need for creation to experience Sabbath rest. Beginning with Leviticus 25, 1 through 7, and 18 through 24, the Lord said to Moses on Mount Sinai, speak to the Israelites and say to them, once you enter the land that I'm giving you, the land must celebrate a Sabbath rest to the Lord. You will plant your fields for six years and prune your vineyards and gather their crops for six years. But in the seventh year, the land will have a special Sabbath rest, a Sabbath to the Lord. You must not plant your fields or prune your vineyards. You must not harvest the secondary growth of your produce or gather the grapes of your freely growing vines. It will be a year of special rest for the land. Whatever the land produces during its Sabbath will be your food for you, for your male and female servants, and for your hired laborers and foreign guests who live with you, as well as for your livestock and for the wild animals in your land. All of the land's produce can be eaten. You will observe my rules and you will keep my regulations and do them so that you can live securely on the land. The land will give its fruit so that you can eat your fill and live securely on it. Suppose you ask, what will we eat in the seventh year if we don't plant or gather our crops then? I will send my blessing on you in the sixth year so that it will make enough produce for three years. You can plant again in the eighth year and eat food from the previous year's produce until the ninth year. Until its produce comes, you will eat the fruit from the previous year. The land must not be permanently settled because the land is mine. You are just immigrants and foreign guests of mine. Throughout the whole land that you possess, you must allow for the land to be bought back. How are we refreshed by Sabbath? By taking time off to rest and recover, we strengthen ourselves and become more productive afterward. The break helps us to realign with God and with our relationships. It interrupts bad habits and allows us to reassess our reactions to life's demands. It gives us time to heal from the stress of life. God created the universe with a need for Sabbath rest for all, not just humans. Farmers know this. <clears throat> they allow fields to lie fallow or unproductive for the same reasons we need the Sabbath. Land that lies fallow is more fertile because nutrients become replenished. Harmful cycles of pest and disease are broken when they don't have the usual crops to feed from. Just like us, the land needs time to heal from work, from the work of producing. From the beginning, God created the world with a rhythm of work and rest. God commanded that every person, every animal, and even the land would have moments of respite. Leviticus 25, one through seven records God's instruction that every seven years the land should lie fallow. For a nation that was dependent on agriculture for survival, this was an astonishing demand. But creation ultimately belongs to God and we are merely caretakers. Ignoring the needs of the earth has consequences. Scientists and researchers believe that a key reason, reason for the collapse of the Babylonian empire was ignoring the need for the land to lie fallow. The civilizations of Easter Island cut down all the trees which allowed the fertile soil to erode, ultimately forcing them to move from the destroyed and denuded landscape. In numerous places around the world today, the land is scarred from overwork and misuse. When God created the earth, God designed an entire system to support life, along with life itself. In Genesis 2.15, God made humanity caretakers over creation. We are not only on this earth for a brief moment. We are on this earth for a brief moment. And if we use creation to satisfy our desires, we risk upsetting the careful balance God created that nourishes all things. This <coughs> great and glorious creation belongs to God. If we are careless with it, not only are we harming future generations, but we are failing in our mandate to be stewards of God's cherished handiwork. When we despoil the land, we also prevent all of God's creatures, human and animal, from benefiting from creation. Jesus taught us to pray, give us the bread we need for today. The earth cared for and cherished is God's answer to this prayer by supplying our need for bread and other food. Even today, according to the United Nations, the world can produce enough food to feed everyone on earth and still have a surplus. 
but factors such as lack of access, poor, store, poor storage, food waste, pest and infestations, and conflict prevent some people from having the food they need. God designed the earth with such an abundance that even the marginalized in the world could benefit from its bounty. But as habitats and croplands are destroyed, those who live in those areas suffer. As caretakers, not consumers, it is our responsibility to care for the land so that all can feel secure that they will have their daily bread. As stewards of creation, we must respect creation's rhythms. When a stream is muddied, it is nearly impossible to clean the water. But if we stop agitating the stream, the silt settles down and the water becomes clear again. By giving creation a chance to rest, we give it an opportunity to heal itself. When the world quieted because of the pandemic, fish returned to usually busy waterways, air and water pollution declined significantly, and areas that were usually full of tourists became full of wildlife. While humans were battling illness, creation itself had a moment to heal. Leviticus 25, one through seven and Exodus 23, 10 through 11 describe the Sabbath of the land. God commanded Hebrew people to let the land lie fallow every seven years and every person could eat anything the land produced. It was a year off, a chance for the land to rejuvenate itself, a chance for farmers to rest and a chance for the marginalized to eat freely the food that was grown. But it was also a year that demanded an extraordinary trust in God. Not only would the people need to have enough to eat during the year that the land lay fallow, but they would also need seeds to plant the following year. Although the land would grow some food on its own, it was a huge risk for everyone to take a rest from farming every seven years. While Leviticus 25, 18 through 22 promised that God would send them a bumper crop every sixth year to compensate, it must have been terrifying for them not to plant. But because the health of the earth is crucial to all created things, even the desire for economic security was not a valid reason for overworking the land. Every 49 years, God commanded that the people observe the Jubilee. If the Sabbath rest of every seven years for the land seemed difficult, then the Jubilee must have seemed nearly impossible. It required a full economic reboot where all slaves were freed and any land that was sold in the past half century reverted to the original owner. The rich and powerful would need to initiate this and they would have been the losers in the deal. So it's not surprising that we find very little evidence that, that the Jubilee was ever actually practiced in its entirety as God had commanded. Despite that, it is important to realize that the Jubilee was God's desire and intent. It was a way of preventing wealth accumulation and redistributing the bounty of the earth to all people. God's desire is for all things to be in balance with one another. As Christians striving to please God, it is important to understand that this is God's desire for the world and an attempt to live as close to it as we are able. It seems strange to think about Sabbath for animals. In the ancient Near East and in places where animals are still used to augment labor, it makes sense that animals would also need time to recover from work. Leviticus 25, seven specifically states that livestock should not work during Sabbath times, but it also says that wild animals of the land should have a time of Sabbath as well. As they do not labor for human beings, why would God command that? When we think of God's creation as a finely tuned, deeply integrated system to support life, it begins to make sense. Every element has a purpose. In 1958, the Chinese government began working to eradicate sparrows because they were eating rice crops. And officials soon found out that sparrows also eat crop-eating insects. Sabbath for the environment doesn't necessarily mean a specific time of rest, but an attitude of respecting the wholeness of creation and allowing it to function as God created it. God glories in the diverse nature of creation, and so should we. We are not the whole of creation. God challenged Job by reminding him how God cherishes and cares for every wild animal and how God knows the needs of each one. Realizing that the habitat for wild animals was specially crafted and designed by God should cause us to treat it with care and respect. Wild animals are not ours, nor are they disposable. As caretakers of the planet, they are our responsibility to protect and care for, giving them the rest of a healthy habitat and protection. The ancient Hebrews intimately knew the land they worked and they were deeply bonded with it. They had been born there just as their fathers and grandfathers had been. They knew that the land was responsible for their daily bread in a very concrete way. Today, most of us get our food from supermarkets, so the connection between our food and the land is blurred. 
being responsible for the health of the earth is removed from most of our day-to-day -day lives. But there are things each of us can do to be good stewards as God commanded. Romans 12, 2 tells us to discern God's will and live according to it. Thinking through what each of us can do as responsible caretakers of creation is following the directives of scripture. Living gently on the land by reducing consumption, recycling, and supporting environmental causes are ways we can offer Sabbath to the earth. By living in harmony with creation as caretakers rather than consumers, we will assure the well-being of the earth and we will be following the will of God. Let's close with a word of prayer. Lord, show us how to be caretakers to your creation and all that is in it. May our actions help the earth to heal and to rest so that all might live within its beauty and bounty. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May God bless you this week.